traffic. I'm in big trouble. See if you can find him. Well, LA is just a tad out of our jurisdiction. Not out of mine. Lean on him a little too high. Oh, come on. They were being jerks. He's here to look into what happened to Gary. How can I help you? Hey, if I were you, I'd be looking for the guy on Tracy Baskin's coattail. And you're going to be cool. Oh, I lied, but I wanted to be cool. That's the kind of laughter a comedian can die from. I'll have Andrew put someone else on in your spot tonight. No way. I'm going on. something, do it after the beep. If you want to laugh, drop by the club. Hi, guys. It's your pal from L.A. Just wanted to confirm that we'll be sending another funny man your way on the 10th. Bye. It's one thing to leave your keys someplace or lose your wallet. I'm always doing both. But it's really serious business when you can't find the bullets to your gun. Well, uh, you got to speak up. I can hardly hear you. So, how's Italy? Good. Well... When are you coming back? I missed you. Uh-huh. Listen, sweetheart, uh, where are my spare bullets? My spare bullets. Huh? No, no, I looked. They're not there. I'll be with you in a second. No, one of the girls got nervous last week. She thought they were going to spontaneously combust, and then she hit them. I don't know where. Well, no, listen, Velda. Velda. Hello? Well, the entire nation of Italy must be out to lunch. Lunch? That's it. That's what? The fridge. Fridge? If I were a bullet, that's where I'd be. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. I don't believe it. You are amazing. No, no, I'm Tracy. Tracy Baskin, your new girl Monday. Friday. No, the other girls talk. Nobody makes it to Friday. Do you have dental and health benefits? What are you, some kind of comedian? Yes, and I can prove it. What are you doing later? My camera. No, I'm sorry. The job's been filled. I don't know about you, but my mother always thought I was a slob. We would go shopping, and after I'd try something on, she'd say, that's very nice. Let's see how it looks on the floor. Mother was probably right. I'm only doing this until I can get a real job as a waitress. Oh, miss, let me help you with this. You know you're in a New York bar when the drinks come with the cigarette butts already in them. Well, I'm in a New York bar. Now, you're the guy with the drinker's cup, right? And let's see, you ordered the low-tar scotch. Are you enjoying your meal? Did you know this is the only kitchen in New York that has a research grant from NASA? Yes. They discovered three new life forms this week, and two of them are specials. Spitting it out won't save you. That's funny, honey. She's good. She's good, Gary. I like her, but uh, I think she needs big time management, you know? I try to dump you, maybe, and give me a shot. Take the ashtray. Why bother to shoot you? Those vitamins will kill you first. Surprise. It was a birthday present for her, wasn't it? 
Take it as a wedding present for me. Here, take the silverware. Here. What's the matter? It's not your pattern? Sorry. Do you know how I know you were going to take that stuff? Because in our audience tonight is a private eye. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Mike Hammer, the private, now public eye. He looks tough, but underneath there's a soul of a comic. When Mike kills his audience, he really kills them. Okay, if any of you are having any trouble finding your waitress tonight, call Mike. He has no trouble finding women. But just in case, I'll be at the bar, third stool from the left. <laughs> Thanks, you've been great. Yeah. Oh, hi, I'm Tracy Bass. Tracy Bassins. <laughs> Hottest pistol in our entire arsenal of comedy weapons. And how about a hand for a bi-coastal buddy with us tonight? Manager of LA's Comedy West, Mr. Keith Anders. Hey, hey, hey. How are you? Great to be here, everybody. All of this New York City weather really bums me out. I want to bring out a friend now from the West Coast, a guy who likes to make a lot out of a little. Please, put your hands together for Scott Servine. Yeah. Scott, come on in. She blew him away. About the guys that were heckling. What did they know? Yeah. Look, the bottom line is your timing's down, the material's much better. Sweetheart, you were terrific. See? <laughs> Mike, this is Gary Kurtz, my manager. Hello. Gary, Mike Hammer, this week's boss. <laughs> if she makes it past Tuesday. Uh, she won't have to make it past Tuesday. The college tour? Yeah. Ah, I yeah. can't believe it, really. I got a final meeting to nail it down. A few loose ends, nothing I can't have. Oh. I'll catch the midnight oh. sale. Oh, Pleasure. Hey, congratulations. Twenty third Lex. Gary, you made a big mistake. What? What are you talking about? The contract thing? Lean on them a little too hard. Oh, come on. They were being jerks, you know? Okay, I lost my cool, but I... I, I, I... Hey, they don't see it that way, man. Well, where is it? Oh, no. No. Anything new? You've got a client. Yeah? Mm. Well, where'd you put him? In the fridge? It's me. You? Yes. Gary's missing. He was supposed to come back to the club last night, and he never showed. Well, what makes you think he's missing? Because he missed a meeting. He didn't go to his apartment. I've been calling all night. I'm really worried, Mike. It sounds like you have more than just a professional relationship. No, we're past that. He, he's got a new girlfriend in L.A. Well, maybe he's got a girlfriend here, too. Listen, give it some time. Chances are he'll turn up. No, he's not like that. He's dependable. He's organized. And I, I just have to know that he's okay. See if you can find him, please. Okay, I'll try. It's the least I can do for the lady who found my bullets. Thanks. Here's the keys to his apartment. I thought you were past all that. We said past. <laughs> I didn't mind checking out Gary Kurtz for Tracy. And it was a new experience having the keys to somebody's place. Most of the time, I have to break in. for over an hour. Come on, inside. What are you doing here? Looking for Gary Kurtz. That makes two of us. So where is he? Hey, I'm the one with the gun, pal. That means you got the answers. Fair enough. <laughs> Look. 
The guy was no comedian, but he had me on the floor anyway. If he were any funnier, I would have been in stitches. Hi, Trace, it's me. Gary. No, 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 just listen to me. Look, I'm in big trouble. I want you to meet me out on the coast. I'll, I'll call you. <laughs> All right, so my mom says, I bought you that laser gun to shoot your sister, not to do eye surgery on the cat. Pew, meow, pew, meow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you like that one. Howie. Meow. It's the act that needs surgery. <laughs> Oh, come on, I'm on a roll. I still got the psycho and hijack routines to go. Okay, there was the shrink. Thanks, Howie. Maybe these will go over better on the West Coast. Stick around, kid, so we can work something out. What can I do for you, buddy? I'm looking for Gary Kurtz. What do you want with him? Well, let's just say he won the lottery. Hey, if I were you, I'd be looking for the guy on Tracy Baskin's coattails. Sounds like the man's got enemies. Just guys like Keith. He'd kill to get his hands on Tracy's contract. She's gonna be big. Look, let's get through the rest of these clowns fast, okay? I got a plane to catch. You want Kurtz? Try the Terrace Deli, Broadway and Fifth. He hangs out there with the no-hopers. Thanks. Have a nice trip. Next. So, guy wants to know if I can juggle. I say it depends on what. It's this chainsaw. Excuse me. It turns out to be a TV spot for some lawyer who specializes in working this kind of case. Would you mind if I told the story? Would that be okay? Excuse me, guys. Anybody seen Gary Kurtz? So up was this guy wearing a Humphrey Bogart garage sale suit? A fugitive from the home for the fashion deprived. Must be collecting for the March of Suits. <laughs> Very funny. Anybody got a buck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A buck? Why? I'm collecting for comedy relief. The joke's in here about a stale as a rye bread. Now, where's Gary Kurtz? Hey, if I needed a heckler, I would have stayed home with my wife. Yeah, who we'll writes your material? If you surprised, I might be interested in buying something. Please, guys, get serious. Serious? I didn't know you wanted to. Come on, let's get serious. Why didn't you say so? I haven't seen him either. Here, let me help you with that. Well, since you put it that way, Gary was here about a half an hour ago. Why didn't you say that to begin with? Where is he? He made a phone call. He ran out the back door. Any idea what spooked him? Well, most people run out of this place after they had a meal. I know. I've eaten here. So, uh, I'm juggling chainsaws and, uh... Somebody once said dying is easy, comedy is hard. But I don't think Gary Kurtz would have agreed. No. What kind of relationship were they having? Well, it's professional now, but they go back a long way. Tracy Baskin gets around. She worked for Gary Kurtz. She's working for you. What is this? Yeah, play your cards right. She could work for you, too. You're a very funny fellow. Where is she? We need to talk to her. I don't know. Try the office. We want to ask a few questions about Kurtz. It won't take long. Mm. Call her. You got a dime? Phone calls cost a quarter now, Mike. Yeah? You got a quarter? You got a quarter? No. You got a quarter? Thanks. Let me have a little more mayo on this, will you? Yeah, coming up. Oh, there you are, Mr. Hammer. You look just like the agency described you. That's Mr. Hammer. Oh. <laughs> yes, of course. Well, I don't know where she is. When I left, she was still at the office. Hiya, boss. I'm the new temp. They told me at the cop shop I'd find you here. I brought you your messages. My what? Your messages. Well, I didn't feel comfortable listening to them. I mean, not until we were properly introduced. Ruthie McLaughlin, designated hitter. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you, Ruthie. What happened to Tracy? That little girl with the big mouth? Yeah. Called the agency, said she had some kind of problem. Problem? 
some kind of... Hey, pal, you got a cassette player? Yeah, right over there. Mr. Hammer, this is New York Telephone, and your bill is still overdue, and we feel... Mike, it's Tracy. I'm at the airport. Gary called and said he was in big trouble. I gotta meet him in L.A. I don't know what's going on, but he sounded scared to death. I have to go. Bye. It'll be right to be scared. Obviously, she doesn't even know what happened. She's not gonna meet Kurtz. Who's she gonna meet? It's a good question. Whoever killed Kurtz could be gunning for her next. Well, L.A. is just a tad out of our jurisdiction. Yours, not out of mine. California is a land of bright sunshine, fresh air, and a lot of other reasons that keep me from going there too often. I found out from the guys at the comedy club that Tracy stayed at Gary Kurtz's house in Malibu. So I rented a set of wheels and headed for the beach. Please fasten your seatbelt. Please fasten your seatbelt. Please fasten your seatbelt. All right, all right, all right, relax. Please fasten your seatbelt. Okay. Please fasten your seatbelt. Are you happy? The passenger door is ajar. The passenger door is ajar. Not anymore. Let's go serving now. Everybody's learning how. Come on a safari with me. Come on a safari with me. Early in the morning we'll be starting now. Surfing now, everybody's learning how. Come on a safari with me. Come on a safari with me. They're cutting tin and mallet, they're shooting up here. At Rincon, they're walking alone. We're going on safari to the islands this year. So if you're coming in, we're ready to go. Come on, baby, surfing to see now. I'm gonna take you to surfing to me. There, don't straighten up on my account. Okay, funny girl, where is it? Where's what? Cut the comedy, you know where Kurtz hit it. It? You have a very weak vocabulary. You know, there are more important things than dressing well. Oh, I like your suit. You don't listen too good, do you? I heard the bell. Listen, you're gonna go answer that, and you're gonna be cool. All my life I wanted to be cool. I'm going to send you to see your boyfriend sooner than you want. What do you mean? Come on, just move it. Come on. Hey, oh. Guys, sweetheart, I got your message. Good. Mike, how long has it been? What? Uh, it's been hell here. I haven't had a moment's peace since you left. Yeah, I, I knew you couldn't live without me. Sorry to close the door on our relationship, pal, but that's showbiz. Hit his gun, Tracy. Now, what are you doing here? Tracy, be careful with that thing. It might go off. Don't worry. It's empty. Hello. Yeah? Oh. One down and five to go. What are you doing here? Gary's dead. He was murdered. Oh, my God. I don't believe it. Who would want to kill Gary? Good question. What about your beach pal? Somebody might have paid him to do it. 
You gotta help me. Hey, that's why I'm here. Come on. I decided to stick around the beach house and see what I could find while Tracy dropped in on her friends at Comedy West to tell them about Gary's death. Bad news travels fast. The comics were already putting together a roast. I guess they have their own way of dealing with that final curtain. We're not here to talk about you. We're here to talk about Gary. You think that Brian Sage came all this way from New York just to hear some laughs? No way. Gary made a lot of contributions to comedy. Ha! <laughs> Donna. He never made any contributions to anything in his life. Gary's tax form gave me no clear information. Of course, mine doesn't either. Did you know he was a ventriloquist? Wait a minute. Gary Kurtz was a ventriloquist? Yeah. He put all the words in the mouth of his gal, Tracy. <laughs> Ow! Tracy. Oh. Hi, I'm Dan, Gary's girlfriend. What's oh, doing all our old routine? What an awful reason for us to finally meet. <laughs> Gary always wanted me to have long hair. Harry. Mm. Come on, Harry, wake up. You're up next. Mm. Stage. Go. Gary was very creative, bi-coastal. Hold it. Gary was bi-coastal? Yeah. I didn't know he came out of the closet. I searched through every corner of that joint and didn't come up with anything. Gary's lifestyle couldn't have been more different than mine. But in certain ways, the place reminded me of home. Gary, wherever you are. I've died a few times myself, like now. But Gary, you've earned your wings, kid. No more lost luggage, no more rubber chicken. You're flying first class from now on, baby. Gary flew first class all right, but he didn't fly alone. So, all right, imagine that this comic dies and he goes to hell. Hey, Howie, this is hell listening to you. <laughs> uh, this is for Gary. Howie, don't pay any attention to him. I think we can cut a deal. Now, go tell your mother you've got a permanent job in big-time comedy. <coughs> I can tell you what you're going to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> now, ready, as long as I don't have a right. here. I wish you were here. I loved him. We all did. Terry Valentine. I never heard Okay, I found these inside the house. Airplane tickets, one for Gary Kurtz, the other uh -huh. for Terry Valentine. Same flight, same day, almost every week. Well, Gary did a lot of traveling for business. Yeah. Awesome. Look at this. Gary Kurtz is always round trip, LA to New York. Terry Valentine is always one way. I wonder why. I have no idea. Okay, when Gary traveled from LA to New York, did he always go alone? As far as I know. Come on, Mike, if I knew anything about this, I'd tell you. I don't even know what drawer I keep my socks in. Sometimes I think I need a private eye just to, just to help me get my life together. Sometimes I think I need a comedian just for a couple of laughs. <laughs> I didn't always be a comedian, you know. I wasn't. I used to be uh, uh, a waitress. Actually, the world's worst waitress. No, she lives in New Jersey. So did I. That's where I'm from. Yeah. yeah, my customers always ended up wearing their food, but they always went out laughing. I think I know you. Oh, right. <laughs> it's not a bad appetite for anybody. Thank you. Tracy took me to see Cynthia Stillman, Gary's attorney and confidant. If Cynthia spent as much time working on her cases as she did on her body, her practice must be in pretty snazzy shape. Cynthia, you still have seven minutes of exercise to go. Oh, and I'm looking forward to it. It's good to see you. I'm sorry about Gary. I wish I could have made the roast. How totally sincere of you, Sin. This is my camera from New York. He's here to look into what happened to Gary. Hello. Hello. How can I help you? Do you have any idea why someone would want to kill Gary? He was a nice guy. Everyone liked him. Not everyone. Ever heard of a Terry Valentine? No. Doesn't ring a bell. 
Tracy, you mentioned that uh, Gary had a girlfriend. Yeah, uh, Deanne Barrows. She might know something. How do we reach her? 555-2632. Cynthia has a photogenic memory. Yes, I noticed. Bye-bye, thanks. Goodbye. See ya. I called Deanne Burroughs and she gave me her address at Venice Beach, a place that's a lot like Greenwich Village with bikinis. I wanted to have lunch there, but I didn't have the energy to fight my way through the bean sprouts to find the hot dog. Excuse me, I'm awfully hungry. Could you? Ah, thank you. Hey, Michael. I guess if you stood here long enough, the whole world would skate by. Since Deanne Barrows was Gary's girlfriend, I figured she could tell me why he always traveled with a guy or a gal named Terry Valentine, unless he was doing it behind her back. In that case, I hoped for Gary's sake that Terry was a gal. Anybody home? yourself. Mike Hammer. Private investigator. Gray Cleaver. Drug enforcement. You're under arrest. I had come out to L.A. to protect my temp secretary from whoever bumped off her old boyfriend. And the next thing I knew, I was in hot water myself. It doesn't matter how pretty jail looks on the outside. On the inside, it stinks like jail in every city. It turned out Deanne Barrows was dealing drugs and the feds were keeping tabs on her. My mistake was walking in on the bust. Hammer? Yeah. We couldn't contact Captain Chambers, but we did reach someone who's extremely anxious to talk to you. Special Prosecutor Barrington. Oh, he's very special to me. Hello, Larry. I can't let you out of my sight for five minutes, can I, Hammer? Well, everything was going fine till about half an hour ago. Listen, talk to these guys, won't you? No, not on your life. You were a disgrace to the city of New York, and now you're disgracing yourself in California. Hey, well, then help me get out of here. I'd love to, but I've just got to go. You know what you do? Tell them one of your funny stories. You're a funny guy. They ought to love that. Bye. What a guy. If you met him, you just love him. Huh. Mind if I make a call? Go ahead. You got a quarter? Thanks. I should have known when it came down to a total stranger or Barrington, I was better off with the stranger. So I called the only lawyer I knew in California and hoped she wasn't power brunching. Uh, Cynthia Stillman, please. Cynthia, Mike Hammer. Listen, I got a little problem. So you want to lay out the charge or do I walk out of here? Assaulting an officer, resisting arrest, possession of a firearm. Wait a minute, the gun's legit. I've got a permit for it. Not a California permit. Suspicion of conspiracy to murder. Suspicion of trafficking in a controlled substance. Hey, I just got here yesterday. I didn't realize I was that busy. You know something, Hammer? Cleaver. What? Are you sure? By who? What about his gun? He's out of here. Clean. All charges dropped. Sometimes I think the only justice is who you know. Or who they know. Hey, that's the way it goes. Sometimes you're down and out. Other times you're down and I'm out. See you, boys. 
Allison, I appreciate you springing me. I hope I didn't interrupt your exercise. <laughs> I keep my legal muscle in pretty good shape, too. Yeah, I noticed. What about Deanne Barrow? Did you have to flex your legal muscle for her, too? No, I, I didn't even know she was dealing. Yeah? Did Gary know? Beats me. Look, I wish I could be of more help, but uh, all I can offer you is transportation. Fully equipped. Can I give you a lift? You already did. Thanks, honey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I took I took care of Kurtz, didn't I? Well, Hammer showed up. I had to get out of there. I had no choice. Yeah, and I am telling you, I'm telling you that everything is taken care of. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on it right now. Relax. They are gonna go out with a bang. <laughs> show business fascinates me. You know a show is a big hit when they start developing products to go with them, like Star Trek lunch boxes, Smurf cereals. Excuse me, pal. I wonder Rambles. if you can help me out. I'm looking for Terry Valentine. Uh, I'd love to talk, but I gotta catch the red eye. Explode milk. Two bowls, and you have a sudden urge to go out and kill the gardener. But Mo, Mo! Shut up, I said! Hey, Mo! <laughs> your mommy, huh? So I uh, says to her, hey, babe, how'd you like some splinters? <laughs> Excuse me, pal. Have you ever heard of a Terry Valentine? Hey, dummy, can't you see we're working here? Hey, don't be rude. The guy asked you a question. Find out what he wants. I'm looking for a Terry Valentine. You'll have to ask him. He does all the talking. Terry Valentine? Ask him. You guys deserve each other. Get out of here. Excuse me, uh, have you ever heard of a Terry Valentine? Hey, hey, what are you doing back here? I am trying to find Terry Valentine. Gee, I, I never heard of him. Now buzz off, okay, because you're going to disturb the comics. Impossible. Wait a minute. Say that again. Okay, okay. I truly believe that the late, great Marilyn Monroe killed herself so she wouldn't have to go through pilot season. You know what pilot season is? That's when all the actors from all over the country come to L.A. hoping to get their own TV series. You the guy looking for Terry Valentine? Yeah. He's dead. That's not funny, pal. It's not supposed to be. He died with Gary Kurtz. He was Gary Kurtz. Or rather, Gary Kurtz was Terry Valentine. He opened for me one summer in the Catskills. Are you saying that Terry Valentine was his stage name? Yeah. He only needed it for about five minutes. He just didn't have the talent. Oh, he had a talent, all right. Unfortunately, it was for the wrong things. My mother, Thanks, sir. A mink coat, but so Gary scary. Kurtz and Terry Valentine were the same person. Now things were getting clearer. The drugs in Deanne Barrow's place gave me a good idea of why Gary jumped from coast to coast when he wasn't making it as a comic. Listen, what can you tell me about Gary's drug habits? Nothing. You know that he was a mule? A what? A mule. He hauled dope back and forth between L.A. and New York. How do you know that? The airplane tickets. It's an old routine. I'll tell you how it works. Okay. You get two identical pieces of luggage. Right. You would check one at the curb under the name of Terry Valentine. And you'd go inside and you'd check the other one at the ticket counter under the name of Gary Kurtz. Right. And the dope would be in the one marked Terry Valentine. That way it was confiscated and couldn't be traced back to him. Do you want to find me one more time? I'm lucky I got through it the first time. Yeah. The mule takes two suitcases to the airport. He checks the one with the drugs at the curb under a fictitious name, and then the other one at the counter under his own name. If anyone finds the stuff, he's off the hook. Carrie didn't need to sell drugs. He was a brilliant manager. He is the reason that I'm not waiting on tables anymore. If you were here right now, he would tell me to fix my act because it stunk. Come on, Tracy, what do you mean? You were great tonight. Didn't you hear him laughing out there? No, no, no. There are laughs and there are laughs, and I was completely off. Wait a second. I know exactly what Gary would do. Where is it? 
Where's what? The videotape. It's crazy. It never leaves the house. What are you talking about? It's my, it's my routine. Gary used to always help me videotape my act so we could work on my timing and rhythm. Timing and rhythm in my act. Oh, damn it. Tracy, you gotta relax. Listen, you're the one with the talent, not Gary. Of course, he's spotted in you. I'll hand him that. But it doesn't take any talent to deal drugs. Any idiot can do that. What Gary did, he did for me. No, what Gary did, he did for himself. Listen, the truth is, Gary needed you a lot more than you need him. I don't know if I can believe that. I think you will sooner or later. It's gonna be okay. Somebody's under the house. Commission, pal. It's him again. All right, get out. Hold it right there. I bombed out. What are you doing here? The police called me. I own the house. Did own it. Gary said it was his. Gary said a lot of things. That's why you're in this mess. We'll rebuild. My house, your career. But it'll go easy. I'll have Anders put someone else on in your spot tonight. No way. I'm going on. What has she got to do with your career? It's her club. She owns a comedy club, too? East and West. What about the beach and the ocean? She own them? Just about. Comedy is serious business. Now that's what I call dedication. I was just hoping it was good news. It's a Greenwich Village postmark. Mailed the same day Gary was killed. It's Gary's handwriting. Look at this. Beverly Hills Day-Night Depository. What's it mean? Whatever that guy wanted, he didn't find it. Gary Kurtz must have realized he was in big trouble. So he mailed himself a card key to a mini vault in Beverly Hills. I knew that whatever was in that vault would lead me to his killer. 
So I headed out to the fabled land of milk and Gucci. The card got me into the place and I made my way through compartments that most likely held this year's bonds and last year's diamonds. It turned out that Gary had hidden away a videotape, probably the one Tracy couldn't find. I had a feeling the best place to watch it would be the comedy club, although I was sure whatever was on it would be no laughing matter. All right, how many women in the room had a Barbie doll? Okay, how many had a Ken? You took him home, you tore him out of the box, and you immediately ripped off his clothes, right? Weren't you just a little disappointed with what you found? I don't know about you, but my Barbie was dressed to the nines while Ken was standing there in his socks, which was just the way I liked him. I wish they created products for the shows I watch, like 60 Minutes. I mean, you never see Ed Bradley sheets or Mike Wallace sleepwear or, or a shaving cream called Rather Lather. I dream of sitting at the breakfast table and saying, It's gotten so bad, the networks are creating shows starring products. There's a new show coming out called I Dream of Jaguars or Jello, which is funny. Are you like... Jaguars? Jaguars. I dream of Jaguars, or my mother, the microwave. You said one shipment. That's right. One shipment a week goes to New York. One suitcase, 10 kilos minimum. Oh, let me just get this straight. I come in. Look, what's to get, huh? Hey, you wait till the audience is seated, you go in the back door, and you deliver the stuff to Brian. I'll be waiting backstage. Gary, I don't know if I like this. I always wanted to be a Barbie doll. Why do you think I'm dressed like this? Right now, they are developing a movie about Barbie doll. A woman embittered, scarred by the memory of the night she was left on the radiator. Where have you been? You're missing Tracy's act. Thanks, sweetheart. I've seen enough already. You didn't tell me that Gary wanted to release Tracy from her contract. Uh, that's right. I told him to take a hike. I had every right to. You also forgot to tell me that he was dealing drugs for you. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about one shipment a week, a minimum of 10 kilos. But then Gary made this tape and threatened to burn you with it. That's when you decided to have him wasted. Stick around for the next act. You'll love the part when the cops show up. <laughs> They say L.A. traffic is murder. They're right. If the Rolls Royce hadn't gotten her, I'm sure a Mercedes would have. So, you kick off your college tour next week? Yeah, ever spend 40 nights in a hot gymnasium? Well, there's nothing like the smell of sweat socks in the moonlight. Ugh, I haven't picked up my wardrobe yet. You better get a flak jacket. Why, you think the bullets are still up there? Nah. College kids eat comics for breakfast. Well, they pick their teeth with private detectives. <laughs> I think I can handle it. I'm sure you can. Thanks, Mike. So what about you? You think you'll be training in your hat for a Dodgers cap? No way. I'm gonna take this hat off just long enough to shake the sand out of it, then I'm heading for New York. Oh, yeah? Hey, wait a minute. Come. Hey, come back here. Hey, wait. Hey. L.A. had been a lot of laughs, but now I was on my way home and my hat was on its way to Hawaii.